All right, welcome to round three of tournament six. This is the um, la uh, one of the last of the round three matches right before the semifinals. Um, and this is our first 2v2 tournament. Um, we have some people that were bold enough to compete uh, without a teammate, um, but we've got the first match here on stream is we've got a 2v2 match where we have uh, Captain and Kraken versus um, It Was Not Me and Snake. Yeah, and I'm really excited about this. As our first 2v2 tournament, uh, a lot of people signed up. We had 21 teams competing. Uh, I was a little surprised as well to see some solo players going in. I don't know if I'd do that myself. I think if you're going to go into a 2v2, you might as well team up with somebody. Yeah, and while being on a team doesn't make your god ability charge faster, it does give you the ability to, you know, do more micromanaging, have players control different sides of the maps, and just, you know, be more be more active and present, really fight over those moons more, or, or do whatever. Yeah, when I was going in, I was I was curious if any of the, you know, the single players would have an advantage by maybe being able to do a little more, control a little more. But from what we saw, they were wiped out pretty fast compared to the 2v2s. So, interesting choice, but I don't think it's going to pay off. Yeah, and it looks like a pretty standard starts from both players, or both teams here, I should say, um, where uh, Red just took their first planet. And uh, Blue is, I think, about to take their planet. Um, and it was interesting to see at the start of the game, you know, both players were really able to take uh, different groups of ships and capture the moons almost twice as fast as a, a normal player, player would. Steve, do you want to talk a bit about what gods these players have? Yes, so we've got the God of Production with uh, Captain and Kraken here. And I think that's an interesting choice because we didn't see them in the last tournament. So I'm excited to see how they do, uh, how that God performs in these tournaments. But um, they have the special God ability of calling in reinforcements. So you get up to fif or 15 extra ships whenever your God ability is ready, which is very handy. And then we've got the God of Defense, which everybody loves right now, which allows you to convert your ships on a base into elite ships. So that has been really useful as those elite ships are very powerful and can change the tide of a battle. Yeah, it looks like uh, Red might be valuing that nuke planet there. At the center of this map, we have a torpedo planet and a nuke planet, and it's interesting to see which what the players choose. And there's also a stealth planet yeah. uh, towards the side of the map, which we haven't seen in a tournament ever. And these are uh, unique planets which uh, turn ships invisible. So it allows you to uh, kind of have a, a taste of the God of Stealth ability. And it looks like uh, Blue Team was quick to capture that, that sniper planet as well, which will start harassing some of this, some of Red's bases over here. Yeah. I'm looking at that planetary shield on that stealth base, and I know that that is probably the <laughs> hardest base to take in the entire game. I think, I think. Oh, look at that. Nice use of coming out of the stealth base to make short work of that st uh, sniper planet. Yeah, I really like the decision as God of Defense to go for that stealth planet and just really lock that down. I, I can't imagine uh, Blue will be trying to attack that anytime soon. Yeah. And I think Blue just upgraded their ships, and now, now they're attacking the sniper planet. It's like a sniper planet trade off, but look at how much more difficult that was for them. Yeah, those planetary That's, shields. Yeah, planetary shield along with that stealth really made an interesting choice for for uh, the red team. Yeah, That's I'm looking at the mini map. Planet. Oh, yep. Or the, actually, the torpedo planet there. Oh, torpedo planet, sorry, yes. Yeah. I'm looking at the mini map, and you can see that different uh, amounts of ships in the fleets, and they seem to be pretty even right now, which is good to see. On this map especially, there's so much going on that it's, I feel like it's essential to have two players to really manage all that. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, we should start to see a lot of action, or constant action, so forgive me if I'm bouncing around a lot here. I'm trying to capture everything. But with two players on this map and a lot of planets, we're gonna see a lot of battles. 
Yeah, I'm guessing the asteroids are gonna come in soon, yeah. Yeah. Oh, see, we're seeing oh, how oh, difficult. Yeah. Oh. It's so hard defense. to take those planetary shield bases. Oh, I thought blue team was gonna come back in for it. That was a smart play by them to pull back. I think that would have been a bad choice to push that advantage, push uh, red's advantage there. Yeah, and now blue is playing from behind here. Um, what is the most important thing to do when you're behind, Steve? Oh, uh, they've they got to make sure they have enough. Oh, right there. That's actually that the is the most thing important right thing. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Once that asteroid's up, they need to capture that and start. And if they can steal the other one, they will be in business. If not, then just take your take your asteroids, make sure your moons are up to speed, and capture as many planets as you can on your side. Get your ship yeah. production back up. All right, let's see if they can take that. Oh, looks like oh, a little but... bit of it. Oh no, that's going to be trouble for them. They yeah, can't get blue that back. really needs this asteroid, and I think. A captain's gathering up some forces there and coming to retake it here. Yeah. And we see Snake doing something in the background. Snake is going to sneakily attack that uh, sniper planet while, these, while blue team's focused on the asteroid. That's a smart play. Yeah, it's so hard as a player to keep track of, you know, even in a 1v1, an important element of the game is keeping track of what your opponent's doing oh, so you no. can just counter it. Yeah. Oh, oh. that's very good by Snake. Coming and in. This with... Looks yep. like he's, they're, they're going to be able to steal it last minute, and they stole the sniper planet. Oof, that's going to make it hard for Blue to come back. Yeah, and now we're looking at the the balance yep, of ships, and we see Red is in a, a, a very much the lead right now. Um, but I'm not sure Blue's out of it just yet. Yeah, oh, there's the reinforcements. Let's see what they do with it. I wouldn't be going for any shielded planet right now, I'm going to be honest. I think <laughs> that's the, an instant way to kill off your reinforcements. Yeah. There's one one neutral planet left they can take, but they, they are being harassed. Blue team is and, uh, and once red power drones arrive at this base they just took, that should put the blue home base in range. Which means it's only a matter of time before red can attack the home base and then, oh. and end this game. I think that's, yeah, that's not looking good. They failed to take the sniper planet. Red has the cover from the snipers and the uh, planet below, that's it's gonna be tough. Yep, and I think here, Snake's going in for the home base, moving all the troops to the front lines. Let's watch Blue's home base here because I think it's, yep, here it is. Oh. We got an asteroid, they're gonna, be 100% sure on that. Excuse me for but the I camera think... angle, sorry. Maybe they need, I think Red needs that, that, another base to get close enough. Um, I think it'll do it with that one. They can hold that. Looks like they're consolidating forces. Yeah, it looks like this is... Yep. Oh. Blue's not we'll gonna let it go easily, so nice. We'll get a little bit Blue's of Blue's grabbing here. all their forces and really moving <laughs> it there. But there's the power. Yep. And here it comes. Even with a pincher attack coming from Blue, it's not going to be enough to overcome the, those odds. Good try. Good try, but I don't think that's enough. <clears throat> yeah. That was, that was a good game, though. It yeah. was even for a, for a while, yeah. Yeah, I think it was that stealth planet. I think that stealth planet was really the key because they went the stealth, they went took the sniper, and from there it just was a steamroll. Yeah, it's really about you know, Red was able to press those advantages and uh, you know use those defensive advantages with uh, being god of defense with those shields to really turn the tides. Yeah, smart play. All right, we're going to update the bracket and be right back with the next match as quickly as we can. All right, we've got the first semifinals game here. We've got a ton of spectators piling in, uh, wanting to see this, this live in game. Um, this match, we've got Bowser and Kilgrave versus Big Sigma and Curbs. And I think... We're just waiting for... There we go. 
All right. Yep. Everyone's on their teams. We are going to begin. All right. Welcome to the semifinals. On the blue team, we have Beady God, also known as Big Sigma, and Curbs. On the red team, we have Kilgrave and Browser. Both players going around, getting their early moons. We're looking at the god decisions. For red, we have god of production. And blue, we have god of volatility. So we saw god of production last game. And that god specializes just in having a little more ships to mess around with. Um, but god of, god of volatility, blue's god, is... Uh, Definitely an interesting one, and one that I think most players consider either best or second best right now, um, solely because of their ability to uh, create nuke ships, which are devastating. And uh, so we'll see uh, they when the god of volatility activates their ability, they can get a bunch of nukes. But as you can see in speedy god's hand they already have a nuke which is from the passive nuke production so we'll see how those those bomb ships are, are going to be used interesting choice oh. to attack that planet with the sniper planet in range i don't think that's going to pay off but it looks like they're oh, able to get did. it oh wow nice job i did not expect that very aggressive play here from blue team yeah nice management by uh, big sigma there speedy god to move it around so the snipers can get it yeah, those neutral snipers can be a little uh, nuisance in the beginning. <laughs> Ooh, we already got. We're already going for the stealth planet. Nice. Yeah, it seems like the stealth planet is quite the resource, which both the teams appear to be fighting over. Um, and no god of defense in this match, so we're not going to see that impenetrable wall of of shield plus stealth. Um, which should it should mean the stealth base will flip. Uh, more frequently. Curbs is making his way all the way over here. Yeah, harassing the moons. Wow, oh, every player fights over that yeah. stealth planet right now. <laughs> That's great. With no god of defense, though, I wonder how useful the this stealth planet will be. I could see the use as, as the god of defense coming out of there, but this will be interesting to see how these other gods use this planet. Oh, man. Yeah, it not, looks not like they're still go. fighting, yeah. <laughs> fighting over it. The advantage here, of course, uh, is you can make your armies invisible and then send them anywhere else in the map, and then they have that initial, initial little boost from being invisible. Uh, invisible ships can't really be shot at, so if you uh, you come in and you basically have an, a sneak attack with your with your army, which can definitely be powerful. Hmm. You might see these neutral sniper planets uh, being taken soon once <laughs> once the teams have decided to stop focusing yeah. on that stealth planet. <laughs> oh, but here oh, we, go. we go. Reinforcements. Smart use of reinforcements right off the bat. You might as well use that one as soon as you can. Yep. No point in waiting. Yep. Now, let's see where they go. I'm guessing that sniper planet. Yep. Yep. Get them along the way. Not a bad call. Oh, but here comes oh, no. here comes Speedy God to counter. Where did he even come from from that? I didn't even see it. Nice job. Oh. oh. Talk about draining resources there. Yeah, no, both both what? teams have a very low ship count right now if you yeah. look at the bottom left. And about an even planet spread, so this this could be anybody's game still. We'll take yeah, and blue team has their their ability up. We'll see if they choose to convert convert any of their ships into nukes. Yeah. It's interesting because Curb seems to just be harassing moons a little bit. Yeah, I mean that's I mean that's a good thing to do. If I, honestly in two v two, I might just have one one person just always harassing the moons. Yeah, it's not a bad strategy. Yeah, this being our first two v two tournament, I'm really curious to see what strategies come out of it or how players kind of shake up shake up what they would do compared to what they would do in a one v one. We still have a neutral planet over there that nobody's bothered to take. Yeah, yeah that, and that's such a free planet. Oh, yeah. here we go. There we go, yeah. Commentator's curse. <laughs> yeah, the, the planet. I got it. 
Pretty wrecked. And... Those uh, little neutral turrets didn't know it was coming for him. Yeah. And that's that. Yeah, they... <clears throat> Bowser looks like they're trying to decide between the nuke. Or the blue planet. Yeah, I wonder. Oh, I hear a lot of. Look at all those souls flying back to the red home base. It must have been quite the battle there. And we see the blue sniper just harassing from the sniper planet down there. Yeah. And these uh, these sniper orbits, which go above and below the map, really, you know, make it interesting because they they are able to support so many different bases. So controlling those is especially important. So interesting. I heard uh, red get the get an asteroid, but I didn't see blue. Yeah, but I think this is gonna go. There we go. Red takes that planet. Oh, and just the ear, the nuke coming in here. Is Curves just gonna launch that nuke in? Or just threatening? Does Curves just have one nuke in hand <laughs> running around trying to. Yes. <laughs> trying to... <laughs> that's, that's quite funny. And uh, if you notice on the mini maps, a new addition to the to the game and to the the stream is that you can see all the players where they are on the mini map with those little cones of vision. Here we go, big fight right outside Red's home base. Oh, and it, oh. this is really interesting that that Curbs is controlling the snipers and using that to support. BD God in the attack. Very smart. Yeah, that's a play I've always struggled to do uh, when I'm playing on my own because you have to manage two two different sort of forces, two different uh, ship set, sets at once. But uh, if one person can hold all the snipers and one person can hold the main army, then it's a quite powerful attack. Yeah, and then it looks like Blue's trying to stealthily capture this asteroid over here. Yeah, I can't imagine Brad will let that slide. <laughs> But look I at called that. it. Oh, yeah, good. good. <laughs> I don't know. But blues really. Oh, all the nukes oh, are no. flying in. <laughs> that may be enough to scare them off from the asteroid. Yeah, red just needs. Yeah, red, come oh, on. No. They're not gonna go. But look at the snipers. The snipers oh, but are... blue, blue is holding ships in the asteroid oh, no. range. Oh, it got converted at the last second back to red. Wow, that was a good battle. Looks like, like Red's the struggling Red's there for a minute. Trying to consolidate here. Yeah. There's still a lot of blue forces here. I don't know if I'd leave. Here come the yet. elite reinforcements for Red at their home base. We'll see how they choose to use those. Oh, oh for the point leave. defense put it. <laughs> and leaving their base empty, which is interesting with all those blue ships circling around. Looking at the numbers, I think Red could retake it in the event that Blue decided to push in. Yeah. So it's not too risky. Looks like Speedy and Curbs are still deciding what to do here. Maybe some debate back and forth. Oh. Yeah, still neutral planets. I, I still see at least two neutral planets, too. Oh, it looks fighting again outside Red's home base. That may be the push they need to clear off that threat. Yeah, and look at the ship numbers, so low. There's tiny little slivers on around the edge of the minimap right now. Oh, and I got another asteroid up. Two asteroids up. Blue doesn't seem to... Isn't seeming to grab theirs very fast, but red's on it. Yeah, and we haven't seen much action around the stealth base, but maybe players are, are deciding yeah. to come back to it. I can imagine that having snipers <laughs> positioned in the invisibility zone of the stealth planet could could be very dangerous. Yeah. And, and just very like, deceptive uh, as well. Bowser went down to kind of harass the moons around that sniper planet and did not do fare well there, so he left. <laughs> Which still gives the support to the sniper planet. Or stealth planet, sorry. Yeah, oh, here comes an invasion though. Let's see. Looks like that's it. And now using, Not even I waiting. think, Kil yeah, Kilgrave didn't even wait for the, the invisibility to kick in and just immediately rush the other planet. Oh, but Speedy just converted the converted ships into nukes. This could. Oh, and uses it to take back the planet. Yeah. 
Interesting. I thought they might split them up, but... Now I'm looking, it's looking kind of rough for blue, looking at yeah. the numbers. I don't know if that conversion was a great choice. I think it could have been, but I don't know if you wanted to use them all in the same planet yeah. there. I would use my nukes against a, a large sort of clustered together enemy enemy army. I think that's yeah. when it's most powerful. Uh, each nuke can kill uh, three or four ships. So, you know, you are you are losing. The, the nuke ship sacrifices itself, but it takes out you know, almost th four times as many of your opponent's ships. There goes. Red is pushing in, and if they take this, the ship... Oh, they did. The ship production, capacity, power, it's not looking good for blue. Red seems to be playing conservative, though. They don't camp that base. Yeah. I saw Kilgrave went and took that nuke planet. But, there, yeah, ship fleet, size, they don't have a lot to worry about right now, so I guess they could just reinforce. Yeah, and I think Kilgrave seems to be consolidating the army. Yep. Bowser There's, might be helping. Oh, Bowser's going back to take that asteroid in the back. Do you see that? Just to be safe, and that's it. Blue team has lost yep. control of their home. And base. there it is. Not much blue can do from this position. I think they might have one or two straggler ships left scattered around the map. Um, that was a good match. I really enjoyed that one. Yeah, that was great to see. Back and forth. Yeah, that was an awesome match. Uh, one of our longest, too. I was going a, a, more than 11 minutes. Yeah. Oh, there's that last ship. has <laughs> been <laughs> There we go. Red, Congratulations, Kilgrave and Bowser. We'll be moving on to the finals. Well, we'll be right back with the next match. All right. Welcome to our second semifinals match, where we have Panda and Danny on the blue team going against Snake and It Wasn't Me on the red team. Um, Panda is our one of our reigning champions, uh, has won all but one of the tournaments it was definitely a threatening player and uh danny and panda that team goes back a long time they were back in the early days of gods of gravity they were a very threatening duo so we'll see how they perform here looks like we are going to have a uh, god of volatility on the blue team and god of defense on the red team and we'll see if red decides to go for that uh, stealth planet and lock it down. That was an interesting uh, decision made by uh, some previous God of Defense players on this map, as it's so hard to break through uh, the stealth turrets plus a planetary shield. Looks yeah, like... Yeah. Coming... Oh, oh Guardi coming in for the sniper planet. Yeah, and we see uh, attacks done from both sides. You know, both players attacking one planet. Um, you know, if you come from both sides with with armies, it's very very powerful. As the defend the defenders really have no chance. It's a smart choice. You know, though, I was wondering how the players were going to manage is that the capturing of the first couple planets, because you don't really have enough by splitting your forces up. So it's interesting to see that they're still managing to capture that first planet relatively quickly. Yeah, and it looks like uh, it won't be the god of defense. It'll be the god of volatility coming for that stealth planet first. Let's go see what they're up to. Looks like they captured their own sniper planet. Yep, looking at the, the mini-map, um, blue has more planets right now, as you can tell, because the the bar, the, the faded bar around the mini-map is larger. Oh, but the neutral nuke's Ooh. coming in. <laughs> That's painful. Yeah. I think Red single-handedly lost <laughs> like 12 ships because of that. <laughs> yeah. Oof, oh! I don't know. Oh, that's not going to be a good choice. Yeah. The, one of the reasons uh, Panda and Danny are so scary as a team is because they will capitalize, they'll punish you for attacking. They'll, they're so fast and aware players that they will just come from behind as you're attacking a base. And which makes it really hard hard to play against when every attack you make is instantly countered. Yeah. 
And that's one of those important things is, uh, you know, working as a team, and we've talked about that in the 1v matches, 1v1 matches, is knowing where your opponent is. And to ha it's the same thing, knowing where your opponent is, but also knowing where your teammate is. And that's really important. So these two are, know each other so well and have played together so many times. It just benefits them. Yeah, and I already saw an attack get shut down because Red was about a wormhole to that point defense planet, but Blue instantly moved their forces there to defend. Yeah. I like it wasn't me just coming over and kind of harassing there. That's not a bad choice. Yep, Red Snipers defending a little bit, but... Oh, yeah, the Red Snipers are locking on. There's a lot yeah. of Snipers there. It always feels so bad to lose lose uh, ships to snipers because <laughs> your ships just don't fight back and just yeah. get picked <laughs> off. So you gotta always be careful about uh, snipers in their range. Oh, it looks like nukes were used against that torpedo uh, planet to really open it up so blue could take it instantly. That's very smart. Use them if you have them. And it was one. I, I like the idea of you, you use singles. I don't like the idea of really throwing in a whole grouping of nukes into one planet at once when you're up. Yeah. I think it's smarter to kind of harass. Ooh, that was a quick take. Yeah, and despite the the planetary shields here, Blue seems to be doing a great job. Look at, look at this nice. synchronization on these attacks. That's great coordination there. What is Red up to? They're going to struggle here. It's, it's hard to beat a team with so much synergy, as you were saying. Yeah. It wasn't me out there capturing that. Oh, looks like both asteroids are up and being taken by red and blue. We'll see if they can hold them. Here, here comes blue again. Yeah. If we look at the amount of planets, everything on the map is blue. I'm looking, I'm looking yeah. at the mini-map, oh, and I'm and seeing that bar on the edge. And they just took that asteroid. If they can hold both these asteroids, this could spell doom here. Yeah. And look, and they have snipers That's... spread out all throughout the map, so any attempt of even harassing moons uh, means you're getting targeted uh, by yeah. a blue sniper. Yeah. I think Snake is feeling it. Both those asteroids have been captured. And that should be it. Yeah, Snake saw it. That's... That's going to be a tough one. Both red players just really unsure what to do <laughs> yeah. in this this spot. Yeah. And to be honest, I I don't know if I could have done any better. <laughs> yeah. That was... There was no big upset, no big turnaround. That was just smart play after smart play by the blue team and just being... Just consistently putting on pressure. And yeah, I mean, here we are. And that, that'll probably be it. Maybe a pan, the signature move of the moon, or of the sun. Yep, looks like the it. The sun has been freed. <laughs> yep. And then this will be and it. Panda and never it. never attacks a home base without uh, the sun buff. <laughs> Just wanting to secure absolute, absolute victory. Yep, and poor, poor red team just has to sit and wait, unfortunately. Yep. They just don't have enough ships to to counter anything here. Blue team has been and here. It comes. Yeah. Oh. And I think one of the reasons uh, Panda likes to go for the sun is because uh, doing so, when your ships are buffed, they have power everywhere. So there's no chance that the enemies can be able to cut off your power or do any shenanigans. It's just yeah. Yeah, between the buff and the power buff, it's 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 a no-brainer. Red team has lost yep. control of their home base. And all the snipers locking onto whatever remains of the red. <laughs> red team red has been eliminated. Blue team won. All right, that was a great game. Great, great pl plays from both team. Uh, yeah. Definitely a very threatening duo, a Panda and Danny, which is, which is what we expected in this tournament. All right, we will be right back. Uh, we know who's going to play in the finals, but we're going to do the the bronze match first before the finals. So we'll be right back with that.
All right, welcome to the bronze match of the sixth tournament for Gods of Gravity. Um, this is our first 2v2 tournament. And on the blue team, we have It Wasn't Me and Snake. On the red team, we've got Curbs and Speedy God, a.k.a. Big Sigma. And uh, some classic God choices here. Um, with a God of Defense versus God of Volatility match. What will win out? The offensive capabilities of the nukes or the defensive power of the planetary shields? We will find out. <laughs> Looks like red team was harassing blue a little bit at their home base. Not sure exactly what was going on there. Maybe a, a sneaky little nuke deployment. I'm not sure. And it looks like we're seeing both players. Uh, let's follow, go in close with red there and see uh, how they're doing their expansion. It looks like it. they're... Yeah, they captured that, that production planet. It looks like they're, each of the red members is going around with, with some ships in their hand, capturing moons and such. And it looks like that neutral nuke's coming in for... Yeah, it's not going to Wiped curbs. <laughs> All right, looks like blue finally caught up there with their planet. Yep. And it looks like a, a bit slower play here. Maybe yeah. just uh, more methodical, or maybe just trying to divide up those initial ships. Yeah, I think that's the hardest part is when you're first starting out, dividing up those ships and trying to see where you're going to go and trying to get that power to your other planets quickly. Yeah, it looks like Red's already controlling this stealth planet here. And making a smart oh. choice right there, yeah. Getting that sniper. Yeah. I think getting the snipers early in the match, and, and if you can distribute the snipers among the planets, then you really have a lot of control over the map, and you can stop the moon harassment. Yeah. I, 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 they seem to be pulling ahead planet-wise. The smart play here. They're consolidating. Well, blue seems to be stumbling a little bit. Snake yeah. even pulling back there. Not sure if he wants to attack. That sniper yeah. support. Hmm. It can be hard to the, to make the decisions in the moment, not knowing what's right, and especially you know. It's important to trust yourself in a 2v2 because yeah. it it can be hard, you know, if you're if you're always like not sure and asking like or trying to figure out putting that pressure on your teammate to make a decision, it's gonna result in you playing slower and uh, and less confidently. That was an interesting choice by Red to pull back there. They've had the sniper support and actually went up and could have taken that point defense planet back, but chose not to follow. Yeah, and we're already seeing, I, as soon as I see those lasers lock on, I I always just run as fast as I can, because those snipers are scary. Yeah. There we go. Blue used the god ability to gain their elite ships, but roll red is going to hassle them with a nuke. <laughs> it's always fun to see the nukes flying around. It looks like here comes <laughs> Curves with a nuke trying to hunt down the, the elite ships. <laughs> They are locked in. I don't know what's going to happen uh, here. We're a game of tag. Oh, and the nukes come in and really wipe out that those blue elite ships. <laughs> and we can uh, see the, the gods are getting angry. Uh, one of the more subtle <laughs> features in the game is that the eyes will uh, look angrier if you lose uh, more a lot of ships. That was smart by Curbs. Oh, nice it looks job. like Red's still controlling the stealth planet. I'm interested to see how Red uses these stealth troops. Um, yeah. and I, what I would tend to do is, if I'm about to do a large attack, I would route that attack first going to the stealth planet to get all to make all my uh, ships invisible, and then going for the attack. Just gives you yeah. that edge, you know. I agree. That'd be great. I think uh, Big Sigma would be smart to take control of those sniper, plan uh, sniper ships, move them around, position themselves so they can come through, take back that point defense planet. Yeah. So we'll Looks see like we're going to have some here. invisible nukes, yeah. which are definitely uh, a, a threat. And oh, my. 
And but that's what you're saying. They just burned yeah. all their nukes. I don't Making like that it. planet, which honestly didn't warrant to that many nukes. No, it, I just it send wasn't in that two. heavily fortified. Yeah, you send in two. I mean, look at all these snipers down here. You send in two, you send the sniper to the moon right in front of it, and you've got coverage. You don't even have to worry. I just, I don't like that I, that plan. I've seen that twice by uh, Big Sigma and Curbs. Yeah, it looks like the asteroid's about to be going to red here. And I, I'm looking at Blue's home base, and they, yeah. I think, <laughs> yeah. they're making some modern art here, as they might have <laughs> accepted defeat. The nukes going in. And then positioning, if they position their sniper ships, this will be a done deal. Yeah, I think that, yep, they the nukes going in, and... Oh. <laughs> I think the the control of their home base. The wormholes they were making the nuke nukes not sure what to target exactly, yeah. but uh, not gonna matter. As Curbs and Blue Speedy God uh, secure the third place position Red in this team. tournament. One. Yeah. Well, that was interesting. I think Red came out and really dominated from the start. There, they pushed that that uh, the close side to the camera, and just held on to that and never let up. And it was pretty much smooth sailing for them. Yeah. All right. We'll be right back where we've got the finals match of this, this, this tournament. All right. Uh, we're just in the pregame lobby for the finals here. We're just waiting for everyone to get settled, get on their teams. Uh, we just want to inch. Yeah. We want to <laughs> ensure everyone has enough time. Let's just give Red Team a little quick look just to make sure everyone has got their gods sorted out. <laughs> Looks yeah, like it. Looks like All it. Right. All right. All right. All right. Welcome to the finals of the sixth God of Gravity tournament, where we have Bowser and Kilgrave on the blue team fighting against Danny and Panda on the red team. This should be a great match. We saw a definitely scary performance from... Panda and Danny in uh, the semifinals. Um, so we'll see how Bowser and Kilgrave are able to deal with the the, the chemistry and just experience uh, of the red team. Yeah, what I like is they're out. They were out to a quick start capturing all those moons. So they did not waste any time. They split the moons and captured them fairly quickly. Yeah, it looks like a little bit of a slower start, or maybe they're just waiting oh, so they could they go do? for that yeah. planet right away. Ah, that's weird because they were out to such a fast start. I figured they'd take the that first planet faster than red, but that was not the case. Bowser's over yeah. here doing some reconnaissance or something. Well, <laughs> yeah. Well, Kilgrave attacks, and Panda and Danny are taking sniper planet right off the bat. Yeah, already have the sniper planet. I wonder how how blue team's expansion is going. <sighs> Slow. It is. That's not good. I wonder what happened. Yeah. There. Maybe they just lost a lot of ships early on. I don't know if they can. They may not take this planet. Oh my goodness. <laughs> Oof. That was unfortunate. Yeah. It's always a bad sign when you have one player doing something and the other player just standing next to them, just watching. To. <laughs> yeah. That either means there are no ships, or. Uh... Oh, and here oh. come the nukes. Panda just harassing a little bit. Yeah, something, uh, I think what the red team did was uh, bait out those nukes and then uh, basically suicide bomb the neutral nukes into that planet. Let's see what Panda's doing there. I think they're attacking the... that that nuke planet and the volatility the god of volatility they just want even more nukes <laughs> they want to secure <laughs> all, all the nukes uh but here comes blue i actually just going for those moons here that point defense is gonna fall it looks like as well yeah and it's it's always hard to take that we see those snipers locking on just as you know, Blue's trying to harass these moons. The snipers are really defending them. And that's, yeah. I think, one of the best uses of snipers is just defending those moons. Yeah. At this point, I'd move those snipers up to that nuke planet, though. 
for a yeah. point defense somewhere. Move them around, because if you've got a couple, you might as well put them into a better yeah. position. And it's worth noting that uh, snipers get less effective uh, the more of them there are grouped together, because at that point they're all just locking onto the same few ships and it's just overkill. Uh, so yeah. it's the best thing you can do is spread out your snipers. Ideally, you have snipers like everywhere on the map. That's the most effective you can be. Oh, see, there we go. Yeah, Panda's moving in. Oh, but they lost the new planet. It's a good play by Kilgrave. Yeah, and Panda's really countering all these attacks. You see, as Kilgrave will run away, Panda's just chasing. And that's something we see good players doing a lot of the time, is uh, just, just chase your enemy down if you have the advantage. Just p apply so much pressure that they can't do anything. We can see by the numbers, both of max fleet size and the ship counts, uh, based, you know, that ring around the minimap, we can see that red is really in the advantage here. And uh, so the red, red just used their god ability, getting even more nukes. So we'll see how the, <laughs> they use these nukes to crack through the remaining blue defenses. Or it looks like they're instead going to use them to take out that, that torpedo planet. I'm moving around so fast here. Consolidating their forces. This is just it's a smart play. Yeah. And I, I think effective uh, 2v2 players will, uh, you know, really, like, operate on different sides of the map so they can have the most coverage. And that's something I, I'm seeing uh, Panda and Danny do a lot. They're not really ever close by unless something critical needs to happen they're they're spread out covering as much space as possible yeah when they come together they come together to attack a planet from both sides which i think is smart yeah uh, we've, we've seen kilgrave and and bowser on the same side and kind of doing the same thing or not doing much so yeah i think that's something maybe as we progress and they they team up more and more they'll probably get yeah. that synergy i'm looking at danny you see how danny's just holding those snipers above and using it to support the attacks just moving them around keeping them just up and in the in the middle of everything yeah it's such a good play yeah and, and what's great is they kept that that they got that asteroid and it may I, I saw there was a split second there where blue did not have a single ship. I saw that bar <laughs> disappear completely, which uh, is very, very rough at this point. Oh. Follow here. We'll see. Oh, see, oh there yeah, go. going Smart. through the stealth planets. That's a good play. And we probably will see a sun capture here. Yep, presumably. Oh, maybe just going directly for the kill. Or, nope, a panda class. Oh, never oh, mind. Taking all their ships through the stealth planet. Oh, oh but no, here comes a... the attack. Yeah. Blue team has lost control of their home. There we go. Yeah. I'm going to nice. wait a couple seconds to call it, but... It appears that Danny and Panda, the classic dynamic duo, and uh, some very long-term and experienced players have uh, won the first 2v2 tournament. Yeah, and you know what's interesting? Like I said, Bowser and Kilgrave got off to a faster start, but they stumbled Blue with that team. planet. Has been I wonder what happened with taking over the planets, because they just team. couldn't convert One. them, and Red was just was able to move up by two planets to nil, and I think that was the beginning of the end right there. You just you can't play catch-up the entire game. Yeah. Look at all the... Look, look at everyone who's watching, yeah. <laughs> Maybe we'll nice. see some, some fun dancing here. That'll do it for us. That was that was quick. I can't believe it. We got through 21 teams. A lot of fun. And yeah. Yeah, it was definitely interesting. The 2v2 dynamic. What would you say the biggest differences are between 2v2 and 1v1? I, I think the two big things that we noted were being able to capture that the first two planets and coordinating how you're going to attack those first two planets as a team. 
And then from there, being able to operate independently and then coming together on certain attacks. Like the way we saw Danny holding the sniper ships. Or the way we saw Bowser earlier or Curbs, you know, ha harass with those nukes. Just a little bit of harassment. You need to make sure that you're really teaming up, you're listening to each other. And I'm hoping that the players were in a chat, you know, an Oculus chat off to the side so they could talk. Because if not, that would have made it very difficult. Um, yeah. Communication so, yeah. is key. <laughs> yeah, exactly. That's for sure. What about you, Jack? What do you what do you notice? I really like to see uh, just the new. You know, in a one v one game, you're really only you're either taking moons or trying to take planets. But in two v two, you just have so much more like mental resource and just like you can do so much more in terms of managing your army. Um, and so it's great to see that, you know, I think, I still think one of the most effective things you can, you can do is just run around with a couple ships and just endlessly take moons. You know, <laughs> yeah. if you can deny your opponent moons, then that's, that's great. And I think in, in 1v1, that can be hard to do at times because obviously you can't just go around taking moons the entire game or you're going to lose. Um, right. but in 2v2, you can really allocate, uh, your, uh, your resources differently. And by resources, I mean, just how, what moving ships around and and making attacks and yeah, yeah it's, it's it's great to see the the variety yeah and it's definitely a different strategy i think it's it's a completely different strategy than we'll see in 1v1 so i think the 1v1 and the 2v2 will give us or give our players enough of a chance to compete in different tournaments to have a little fun to mix it up and to try something new yeah well, that's great well thanks for watching everyone and we'll see you next time Yep, thanks for watching. Have a good one, everyone.